Welcome to the TLT Movement Podcast, a podcast for tomorrow's leaders today. In this episode, we're joined with Mr. Paul Martin Helly. He is here actually speaking and helping facilitate TLTCon 2022. Anything challenging is going to be hard. But so what? Hard could be the new fun. Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. Who's going to carry the boats? Endeavor to persevere. If you want to be a good leader, you have to understand human nature. I never look back. It distracts from the now. Generation. Now, I just met you yesterday, yeah, and uh, you did a, a talk for all of us that, I got to say, Paul, was very inspirational. Just oh, right on. You spoke about uh, the power of your thoughts and, and how you think can manifest into real physical reality. It was very cool. Now, is public speaking, is this, is this what you do full time? You know, uh, I, I do, Dan. I make, I make a living speaking, but I'm not a motivational speaker. I'm a, I'm a communicator of principle. So uh, rather than rather than motivate, I teach and train. Okay, cool. Yeah. And and you you go to conferences kind of like this, or yeah, I, I either am a guest speaker at conferences. I host many conferences uh, for about ten years. I put on the largest leadership training conference. Uh, I've trained more leaders probably than any other person living or dead uh, <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> so uh and coaches and speakers and trainers and that that's really that's my sweet spot now you don't just become this type of person overnight i mean what's in in a brief just for yeah, our sure. audience i'm sure there's there's interviews with you online where you go yeah, in a little bit sure. more detail but what's your story how did you get into this position where you're able to teach yeah so i think you know i, I think the best way to become a teacher is to be a student mm -hmm. um i I grew up with a really low self-image, really low self-confidence. Um, I grew up with a terrible stutter. Mm. I could barely complete a sentence. And as, as you know, in, 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 in life, the playground of life is pretty cruel. You know, kids can be cruel. And if there's anything yeah. different, you get picked on. And, and I know you, you stuttered with this. Yeah, you, yeah. You, I've, I've stuttered my entire life uh, since I was a kid. It used to be really, really bad. Even in high school, yeah. it was pretty bad. But it was the ninth grade that I decided I'm never going to let it hold me back again. Wow. And actually, it was inspired by this, by this camp here. But I really, I mean, every day I'd come home from school and just be like, Mom, Dad, I can't talk. I hate myself. I hate yeah. myself. I, want, I know what I want to say. I just can't say it. And I decided in the ninth grade that I'm never going to let that hold me back from doing things. Mm. And so every day since I was 16, I've tried to put myself out of my comfort zone a little bit wow. more. And now I'm at the point where I can fluently speak to you, who I just met. Um, and that, I mean, if, if I was looking at this footage when I was 18, even, oh, forget it. Yeah, I would have been like, what? I could get to that point in just yeah. four years? That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and, th and th that was my experience. You know, uh, you know, we... Again, you get picked on as a kid. So, you know, I, I was called, hey, the, the, the dummy, hey, st 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 kids would mock my stutter. Sure. And I would later go on to realize, Danny, that, that you know, our self-image and our self-esteem, they're two different things. Image, self-image is the image I hold of myself, how I see me and how I believe you see me and the world sees me. Self-esteem is my personal self-regard, how I value me and how I believe you value me. Those two components form what we call a composite of self-belief. Now, our beliefs are created two ways, through space repetition of time or through an emotional set of impact when something happens to you. Mm. And so I, I spent the first half of, my, half of my life believing that I was dumb and stupid. And my results indicated what I believed. You know, sure. <laughs> you know, the, 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 the power of beliefs is, you know, belief drives behavior. Belief. See, you, we don't do what we want. We we do what we believe we're capable of. We we mm. we reproduce who we are, good or bad. And so, my life was changed. My life was changed at 24 years old. Uh, I was. Uh, was it in an instant or was it oh, gradual? Yeah. It was. It was. It was in an instant. I was. Um, I, I had failed out of school. Right. I, I failed out of school uh, at 15. They, they called me in and told me, you know, you're done. You know, you're never going to be able to graduate. You're 
grades are horrific. So, wow. and, and, and being Italian, I didn't realize that, uh, when, when you get kicked out of school, you move on the same day. Right? <laughs> so, so I was, so I was kicked out of school and kicked out of my house. Right. Oh my and gosh. so I, you know, I ended up doing, uh, I was a dead end job. I was a, I, I was a roofer for a number of years. And then I, I started cleaning toilets. I was a janitor mm. and I walked into a guy's office who was a multi, he probably worth a couple of hundred million dollars. Wow. Uh, and he gave me a book. They can grow rich. And he said um, that uh, he, would, he would mentor me. It was the first time in my life where somebody, like, believed in me. Like, somebody truly saw my potential. Mm. And, and he said to me, you know, that, you know, that I was creating everything that I didn't want in my life by, the, by, by, by just thinking of how I saw myself. And I, I thought, I, I didn't understand that. That can't be true. It can't be true. Because <laughs> why would I be creating, why would I create a life of struggle, right? Right. <laughs> Here's what happened. I was making about $20,000 a year. Um, two years later, I was making a quarter of a million dollars a year. Within five years, I was making a million dollars a year. Let's go. That's okay? awesome. I built that company into a multi-million dollar company. I've owned seven multi-million dollar companies globally. Those companies have done about a billion dollars in sales. Wow. Okay. Uh, I've lost my stutter. Now I still stamper, right? And you stamper a little bit too. A little bit. A little bit. Um, so I still stamper. You know what? I fucking love it. <laughs> I, I, like, I, I wear that now as a badge of, badge of honor. Right? Sure. You know, that's my like, you know, uh, I got it, right? To the world. You know, I got it. It's all right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, our, 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 our past doesn't equal our future. You know, our past doesn't equal the future. The mistakes we made in the past, you know, you made, you don't have to pay twice. Mm. You, know, you don't have to pay twice. And the whole thing was this idea that we have to, we have to you know, in, in Romans, the book of Romans, it says that to not conform to this world. So that means do not conform to the conditions and circumstances that you're in right now. Don't conform to them. Don't go with it, right? Mm. But be transformed through a renewal of your mind. And, and, and so most people don't understand that, you know, the, the mind is an activity, of the brain and that we can direct that energy. Mm. And um, so through years of study and application, I changed the image that I had in my mind. I changed every single one of my beliefs. Our beliefs are based on our evaluation of things. And frequently, if we'll reevaluate things, our beliefs change. And so when we begin to reevaluate our potential and who we are and what we're capable of, all of a sudden our beliefs about what we can do changes. Mm. And belief drives behavior. Wow. So let's, let's kind of go back to this idea of self-image and self-esteem. Sure. Now, you said that your mindset changed in an instant when you read this book, Think and Grow Rich. Rich. Who's that by? Napoleon Hill. Napoleon it's Hill. It's the number one all-time selling book outside the Bible. Wow, that is impressive. That I've never even heard of it. That's crazy. We'll put the, the, the link in the description. So let's go over again. What, what's the difference between the self-esteem and self-image, and how are they related? How, yeah. are, are, are they kind of yeah. similar? Do they overlap? Yeah, the, it's the composite. So if you think about it, self-image is, is formed by you know, what we are told we are. You're dumb. You're stupid. You'll never amount to anything without an education. Who do you think you are? We're poor. You know, we don't have as much money as the other people, right? Sure. And so all of a sudden, we begin to, we begin to build an identity around that. Mm. Okay, so who am I? I'm, I'm a janitor. That's who I am. I am what I do. Mm. I am what I have. I'm my results. You are not your results. Your results, at best, at best, are an indication of your awareness. That's mm. it. At best. And at worst? And at worst... Um, I think they're an indication of your potential, right? And where, mm. we, where, we, where we lack the awareness of our potential. And so what we have to understand is, is that we have the ability to shift our awareness of our potential at any given time. We can change that image. image. See, I'll give you an example. Um, you were probably told, as I was, uh, you never amount to anything without getting a formal education. You've got to have a formal education. You've got sure. to go to good high school, you've got to go to college if you're going to get rich. Right. Do some studies, and you'll find that if you want to get rich, quit school. <laughs> Agreed. Okay? <laughs> Statistically, if you want to become a billion, certainly if you want to become a billionaire, quit school. Right? Mm. Um, there, are, there are millions of millionaires that, that never graduated high school or college. Right? And so, so I started to study, and I started to realize, huh, that's not true. 
what else might not be true? What else might not be true? And I started to look at all the things that I was programmed to believe about myself and other people, and these things just weren't true. Mm. They were affirmisms that other people had passed down. They were, they, were, they were stories and fairy tales. They were all kinds of things, but they weren't true. Lots of them had facts, but there's a big difference between facts and truth. Facts change. Not only do facts change, we can change the facts of our life. It may be mm. a fact that you don't have any money, but that's not your truth. Mm. The truth is that you have the ability to create as much money as you want. The fact is, is that you probably haven't gotten serious about doing it. Wow. Not that you don't have the potential to do it. You probably just haven't gotten serious about doing it. Have you, have you, do you know about Kanye? Kanye West. Kanye West. Yeah. He, he just dropped this new documentary on Netflix that mm. I watched. That was very inspiring. Did he? Where it was his, right before he dropped his first album and the confidence that he exuded. He's like, I am the best artist of my generation. Everybody in the docs like, dude, you haven't even dropped an album. We, I haven't heard a song yet. What are you talking about? You're, yeah. you're the Michael Jackson of this generation. What are you even saying? He was so confident. Yeah. And when he dropped that album, it, he just skyrocketed and he never lost that. I mean, just throughout his whole career, he's been able to maintain this almost unrealistic, yeah. but it's become realistic for him. Oh, it's, so, it, and people think he's delusional. Right. I saw an interview with him and Joe Rogan. I don't know if you saw him. Yeah, Joe, yeah, yeah. He's like going to be president of the world or whatever. Right. <laughs> but but, but think, about, think about Muhammad Ali, the greatest fighter of all time. I am the, I, he, he, he was the best in, the, in his head. And he kept telling people, I'm the best in the world, I'm the best in the world, I'm the best in the world. I'm the best. And people say that arrogant. That's not arrogance, that's awareness. What's the difference between somebody being arrogant mm -hmm. and saying that they're the best yeah. and then actually doing and being the best? Yeah, I think it's the doing piece. Mm. It's the actually, you know. See, I don't think, I don't think that you have to, be, like w when I first started speaking and teaching and training other people to do what I, what I do, I hadn't yet become a millionaire. Right. I was young, I was probably, you know, because Patrick Hayes, the guy who turned me on, you know, he, he turned my light on at, at about 22, 23 years old. I started immediately sharing what I was learning, right? Sure. I mean, you know, it's kind of like if you go to a good movie, you tell everybody to go to the good movie. You go to a good restaurant, you tell everybody to go to the restaurant. And so, you know, I started to share. And, you know, but I wasn't rich. So here I was at 27, 28 years old, you know, not being a millionaire, but, but telling people that you could be, do, or have anything you want in your life. Right. And really believing that, right? even though I hadn't done it. But here's what I realized is that Earl Nightingale, who wrote the book, The Strangest Secret, he defined success this way. I think it's the best definition of success I've ever had. He said that success is the progressive realization, the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. An ideal is an idea that you've fallen in love with. Mm. So in other words, he's saying, it's not the destination. It's not that you've arrived. It's that are you in, 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 in integrity and are, you, is your, are your actions congruent with, with moving forward, progressively advancing in the direction of your dream? If you are, that's what success is. Mm. So I don't need to be a millionaire in order to share a philosophy of, of wealth, of, of wealth creation. Sure. You know, when I was growing up, uh, you know, I'm 56 years, so, you know, I've, I've got years on you, right? I'm double <laughs> a, your age. A few. Yeah, I'm, I'm double <laughs> your age. When I was growing up, uh, I remember we were watching uh, the Olympics on TV. And uh, it was the first time an Olympian had ever gotten a perfect 10. 10, 10, 10, 10 straight across the boards wow. in gymnastics. It was Nadia Comaneci from Romania. And she had, she had this coach who was, he was wearing like an Adidas outfit, right? He looked like the Goodyear blimp. <laughs> he got three times he'd been kicked out of, the, out of the arena for smoking a cigar. So here's this a guy. savage. Yeah, just like he's unshaved, right? And he's got this, this ballerina, this, this specimen of perfect health and perfect flex flexibility. And he coached her to perfection. See, he didn't need to know how to do it. Mm. He needed to know how to get her to do it. He had to get, he, he needed to know how to program her brain that she was the best in the world and that she would be perfect. And so wow. you don't have to be in order to believe it. But, you know, it, Les Brown, one of my mentors said, you don't have to be, you, you don't have to be great to start, but you've got to start to be great. That's good. And that's what Kanye that's was doing, good. right? Yes. You don't have to be great. And Kanye was saying, you look what, you know what? I'm great. I'm great here first. Everything that happens first starts here. So, of course, he has to believe it here. That's what Muhammad Ali had to believe. And that's what you had to believe in order to get over your stuttering. 
Amen. Is, is yeah, that I will get over this. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I this is very interesting conversation. You're talking about how a coach or somebody can encourage somebody to become the best and become yeah. great. We know the the classic saying of you are the top five people who you hang around with. That's right. How do you recognize in somebody else that they're becoming, they're not quite the person that they're saying they're going to be, yep. but how do you recognize in somebody that they are going to be successful and I want to put myself around them? Yeah, I think, it's in, I think it's congruency and integrity. There's a word called praxis. Praxis is the integration of thought and, be, thought and belief, right? That's mm. what praxis, the integration of thought and belief. So it's great that somebody says that they're going to do something and, or they think they're going to do something or they, you know, there's lots of people that claim they believe all kinds of stuff, but there's no, right. there's no evidence. Right. right. I remember when, um, when the current Pope became Pope and he called all the Cardinals in and he said, you better smell like sheep. And, and, and what he was saying is, is if you're supposed to be the shepherds of the flock, you, you better smell like a sheep. Mm. You better be, you better be, on the field, you better be around sheep. You better be ministering to the people. Is what he was saying, right? You know, uh, my, my favorite book, the Bible says, "By their fruit, you know them." Right. Mm. And so, what I'm looking for, you know, if for me, and I and I encourage all of you, if you're looking for a mentor, is you know, are they congruent? Is there praxis? Is there integration between what they're saying and what they're doing? Mm. Right? Is there an integration there? Is it? Is there evidence? Is there fruit? You know, because if there's no fruit, there's no root. So even if they aren't a millionaire, you can still recognize oh, the sure. fruits in people. You can still, even if they're talking like, because I think that's the difference right there between arrogance and thinking, and awareness. thinking that you believe it yeah. and truly believing yeah. it. I mean, it's, it, look, you don't have to go far in your day to see people who aren't living up to their potential. I mean, mm. on the other side of that wall, on the other side of that wall, there is some potential, right? You've Absolutely. Got, I don't know. You got nearly a hundred kids, young people, young men and women in, in that room. The, the only difference between their results and, and where they are right now is they lack the awareness. Mm. I wish, I wish that they could believe what I see. I wish that they could. That would be my prayer for them, is that they could become aware of what I see in them. Wow. See, we can't see our own potential. It's something we see in other people. We right. can identify, but we don't see it on ourselves. And so when, when, you, when, when you find a mentor and, and you see that, I think, I think you'll find that the very best of the best are, are, wanting, are wanting to be givers, are willing to do whatever it takes to lift someone up. Sure. You came to me and said, hey, would you do the podcast? I mean, did I say, oh, let me think about it? Let me, what was the answer? <laughs> it was, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely, let's go. Y you want to do it right now? We'll go right now, let's go. <laughs> let's go right now. Why? Because... That is my purpose. It's, I'm mission driven. I believe what I believe. And, you know, purpose is why you do what you do and the filter through which you make every single decision. Mm. So very, very clearly, like, why am I here? I mean, I, I, I teach what's being taught in the room. You know what I mean? I could, you know, I, I could do, I do it in my sleep. I eat it for breakfast. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? But if there's, if, if there's one, if there's one thing for me to learn, if, there's, if my presence encourages one person, if I lift one person, if I can model it for one person, just to get them to, to have that much more self-belief, it's worth it to me. Because mm. I, know, I know the power of, of, of transformational belief. Of it's, planting a seed. Of planting a seed. And it growing into a yeah. redwood. I mean, oh my goodness. it's awesome. Rain, Wayne Dyer had such a phenomenal quote. He said, you know, you can, he said, you can count the apples in a seed. But you can never count this, the apple. He said, you can, yeah, you can count the seeds in an apple, but you can never count the apples in a seed. Right. And it's just so true, right? So it's true. So true. Yeah. Has there been an experience with you where you were teaching, somebody was in the crowd paying attention heavily, comes up to you after, wants you to be their mentor, is in, so inspired, and then actually went off and like did something amazing that you look back and went, man, if I wasn't there that day, like, like, Oh the, yeah, I, I affected that person's life so much. Yeah, I've I've changed. You know, it's I've God has placed me in position to speak into people's lives. I have a gift, mm. and I know I do. And I have a gift to be able to to inspire people, and then God's gifted me with with the ability of business, and and I've been able to to really help people. Boom. My what I do when I'm working with somebody professionally, my first goal is to double their yearly income. 
And it's funny because when I say that to people, and you know, most of the people I'm working with are already making six figures. Sure. And so the idea that they're going to go from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year when when they've when they're busting their butt to make a hundred, they're thinking there's you know there's no way I could double it. I'm thinking, well, well, there's no way you can double it doing what you're doing now. Right. Doing it the way you're doing it now. Doing the way that you think you can do it now. But if you've figured out how to do it one time. All I'm suggesting is, could you figure out how to do it 11 more times? And I bet you could. And so I ask him one question. When was the last time you sat down every day for two minutes a day for 90 days in a row? Seems easy enough. And took out the magic wand and said to myself, let me think of how. You know, not one of them's ever said, oh, I do it all the time. Right. <laughs> well, I said, well, there you go. You haven't even thought about how you could double your income. Wow. What, what, what would happen if you just sat down? See, limitation cannot withstand the assault of thought. Say that one more time. Limitation cannot withstand the sustained thought. It, it, it just can't. So if, if you think about it, if, if you have a limitation and you're willing to just assault it with thinking of how I can, 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 it will give way, period. Wow. Full stop, full stop. You know, the Wright brothers didn't have a pilot's license. Right. right? <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, they didn't know how to build it. Then they didn't know how to fly it. Then they didn't know how to land it. You know what I mean? Edison didn't know how he was going to illuminate the world. Jarvik didn't know how he'd create the heart, mm. right? I mean, nobody, you don't know how to do anything. Nobody knows how to, we don't know how to do anything until we've done it. Mm. So requiring that we know how to do something before we start is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. You, like, like if I asked you, Danny, tell me how you would stand up. And you're a professional stander upper. I mean, you've been standing up for probably 20 years now. I love it. Yeah. It's, it's my passion. It's your passion. <laughs> you, you, you probably couldn't tell me the neurological and physiological changes that you would have to make. It would take you the better part of a week to get them perfectly in order to tell me what you would do just to, just to do this. Sure. What you would do is you would start to move, and then you'd tell me what you did. Mm. you tell me what you did. Well, in other words, you need a result in order to improve a result. What most of us are doing is thinking that we get one shot to make it work. No. Success, success, if it you know, requires failure. It requires that you fail. Right. You know, Drucker said, fail fast, fail first, fail often. Right? Mm. It's, a, you know, failure is success's constant companion. You know? And so most of us have been programmed, oh, you don't want to fail. You don't want to fail. Don't make a mistake. Don't mistake. It hurts to fail. Yeah. It's hard to fail. Absolutely. And, 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 and hard is what gets things done. Yes. Hard is what gets things done. Right? And so, you know, it's, it's like you know, the motto of this, of, of this conference is, you know, hard is the new fun. Right, hard change your mindset on Absolutely. what hard is. Absolutely, if right. hard is worthy. And so, look, people say, well, yeah, but what if, I, you know, what if I start the business and I fail? What if I go for the goal and I fail and I kind of chuckle and say, what, aren't you cute? What if you fail? You're going to fail. <laughs> right. I mean, what if you fail? <laughs> You're going to fail. It's a necessary requirement. Not, not necessarily the um, reaction I'd expect from a motivational speaker <laughs> as yourself. Yeah, yeah, You're, You're going to fail. You're going to fail. <laughs> And you're going right. to fail colossally, and it's going to hurt, and it's going to probably cost you money, and it's going to cost your relationship, and it's going to cost your pride, and all of that is a necessary component mm. because the purpose of a goal is not to achieve the goal. The purpose of a goal is to cause you to become the person who can create it. That's wow. the purpose of a goal. Wow. Clip that. Quote that. That was good. That was so true. <laughs> Love it. I mean, if you think about it, though, because if you have to fight to get it, you're going to have to fight to keep it. What you want to be able to do is be able to create, you know, you know, I create million dollar companies very easily now. Now, but I, I, I failed so many times though. I went bankrupt. I got, I, I, I was embezzled. That's all part of the deal. Right. I was on welfare. I was on food stamps. That's all part of the deal. It's a necessary, it was all a necessary part of my journey. Mm. But now, you know, when, when I'm, when I'm doing deals with, with, you know, I'm not intimidated. I'm not, you know, a million doesn't even like, doesn't even, it's nothing. It's not, Has, it holds no power. Over it you. holds no power at all. No, not at all. All right. I got one last question. Sure. Now we have a lot of young viewers of this show. Yeah, right on. Assume you're talking to your 16 year old self yeah. 
what would be the number one nugget piece of advice that you would tell your 16-year-old self? Yeah. Feel free to think about this for yeah, as no, long as... I got it. All right. Yeah. Well, well, first off, everything that's going on right now, all of your results right now, don't even matter. They're necessary stepping stones. Uh, they're necessary stepping stones. Um, play a much bigger game. Take a much bigger risk. There is no such thing as risk. Risk is a myth. Whenever you feel that you're taking a risk, that's a sign that you're underestimating your resources. And the minute that you realize that, you, you go inside and say, hold on, I'm fully resourced. I wouldn't be able to get this idea to start the business, to go for the job, to go back to school if I couldn't do it. You wouldn't be able to get the idea if you couldn't do it. So I would say to yourself is, you know, don't keep score against yourself. Mm. Uh, don't worry about the, the results and the failures. Who cares? There's a bunch of, bunch of, bunch of mistakes that I made. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, I'm, I'm ashamed of myself. Uh, you know, I've, there's some things I'm, I, you know, I wasn't a good person. You know, I was, I, 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 I did bad things, and I made it through. Um, I, I made a change. And so I think what you want to do is you want to be better than you were yesterday and keep doing that. Awesome. What a great word of advice. Thank you so much, Paul. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate your time on the show. You're a very inspirational guy. And, uh, man, this, this concept of you're in control of your own thoughts, it seems so simple, yet it's profound. <laughs> it is everything. And I yeah. appreciate you for opening not only my eyes, re reopening them. I, I've been aware of this for a while, but the way that you said it on the show and last night, I know in there it made a huge impact, and uh, we appreciate you. Right on. Thank you, Danny. Thank you all. Be well.